sleep, sleep. A lot of you are having trouble sleeping. Not that I hear from you, but I can tell. I'm having trouble sleeping. There's too much noise in the uh, in the vapors. It's too much noise, too much bad energy. There is evil out there, and it's 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 all around. Many people are struggling uh, to get through and uh, having trouble sleeping. Well, Norbert Poyser is back with us tonight. And uh, this ought to be an interesting conversation. There are a bunch of images, if you look and guess, below Norbert's name, and they have to do with sleep. And he has a very interesting product, a solution to help people rest well. Uh, it's, I get the idea that it's a kind of a, a non-intentional bonus from the technology that Norbert is, is, uh, is, is marketing and continually doing research in. It's, uh, it's all very interesting. It's called Protect Pro Technology. You, you know it, all made in Germany, not made anywhere else there. The SD uh, 91, 95, 910, and 950, they're all there. You can see the different sizes. Hello, Norbert. Welcome back. Thanks for being there, as always. Good evening. Good evening, my friend. Thanks a lot for having me again. I appreciate it. You Thank bet. You. We, always, we always learn things. Very interesting. Now, sleep. Uh, how does, Did you set about in your work and your research to come up with something that would help people with sleep? Or is this just kind of like a big bonus for the technology that you had already developed? And you found out that it was helping people sleep better. No, I had to start from scratch with this problem. Ah. I must say, first of all, I'm not a doctor and I cannot give any medical advice. Everything I'm saying tonight on the show are my personal findings um, and my opinions. I'm a life coach. Uh, I'm a consultant, but I'm not a doctor. Okay. Very well, good. Well, what has happened Understood. is that I personally, except for a short period of time I will talk about later, Except three months in my life, I could go to bed and within 10, 15 seconds, I was asleep. Always. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. sleep was never a problem for me. My wife complained that I was so fast asleep, saying goodnight and bang, I was gone. She was jealous, you know, uh, how fast I was asleep. So I did never look into mm -hmm. sleep problems because I didn't have one. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, over the last 10 years, I give webinars and especially seminars across the world. And in these seminars, people came up more and more asking me, do you have a solution for sleep? And I was like, Buffalo said, no, I don't know. And it became more and more and more and more. And when I asked people, what's the problem? When I looked into it, they said, well, some people say that a problem falling asleep. Others said, well, uh -huh. after a certain amount of sleep, they woke up and they couldn't go back to sleep anymore. Or they woke up in the morning and were completely kind of gone and shattered and cannot face the next day. So, okay, I started to look into this. And about one and a half years ago, I said, okay, I got to do something about it. And it took me a good year to get to the point where I was releasing uh, last month a new product, which we talk about later. But first, the problem. So I saw the problems. And the thing is that <clears throat> the body needs to sleep, let's say, six to eight hours a night. And the best sleep starts yes. around 10 till 4, 6 o'clock in the morning. And I remember when I was small, people would go to bed at nighttime when the sun set down more or less. And uh, then they uh -huh. wake up in the morning early when the sun goes up. But we changed the world. So um, I knew something needed to be done. So I started to look into this and I came across more and more topics. What are the possible causes? And I came up with 17 possible causes, 17 so far. And if any listener has a topic which I forgot, please let me know. Mm -hmm. I'm always willing to improve what I'm doing and my presentations. And what struck me most was, and that was my start point, when you have kids, like I have my grandkids, um, mm -hmm. they're now 10 and uh, 12 and 14, Kids can sleep in any position, anywhere, no matter what the situation is. They're tired, 
bang and they fall asleep uh, <clears throat> in the loudest mm -hmm. uh, environment and uh, they fall asleep in the living room and you pick them up and take them to bed they wouldn't realize what's going on they would be sleeping so i said okay so what happening what's happening that children can sleep so well and we adults have problems which means to me very easily which means between childhood and becoming an adult something must have happened things must have been introduced to our life which made us having sleep problems or we forgot mm -hmm. to do things which children did to have a good sleep so in either way i got to find the reason so i'm going to present to you now the 17 reasons and i encourage the listeners to take a pen and paper and write the topics down of these 17 topics now every one of these 17 topics would be plenty of to have a show on its own but we're going to kind of a checklist go through them mm -hmm. and as a kind of mm -hmm. a topic list okay so we cannot dive completely into each subject some subjects i do on separate one two hours webinars and shows and seminars so uh, let's see how we're doing now what's important for people to understand if you have a sleep problem there must be a reason very simple your car doesn't start in the morning there is a reason and as long as you don't find the real reason you will keep having the problem so if you kick the fender the car still doesn't start the kicking of fender doesn't work as long right. as you don't have the real why for your problem and solve the real why the problem uh -huh. will never stop that's just basic logic right so from these 17 points there may be some listeners for them all 17 points are valid for their problem somebody says oh that's not a problem for me that's a problem. i have only number three and seven although somebody has 10 and 12 whatever it is write it down and go through it because you are the only person who can decide which of the 17 points is valid to you valid to your problems is that a good start yes excellent good yeah, very good so let's start with problem number one for for the reason you cannot sleep and i call it if you write down personal problems now personal problems in your marriage in your family with your children with your work with money your own health issues or somebody else's issues or right. your own unethical behavior and guilt uh -oh. which you may uh -oh. have mm -hmm. if, if you have guilt uh, if you have done unethical things I tell you they haunt you in your sleep you cannot get rid of them they're there whether you want to know or not to know they haunt you right. so these are all personal mm -hmm. problems right and mm -hmm. uh, you have to look at these personal problems and you must make just a write down a topic list of your personal problems which you have uh, i cannot help you now to help with your personal problems i do this as a life coach but just the first point you must know that personal problems can create bad sleep at daytime the body is action in defense very active very aggressive very defensive you know you're very strong at nighttime you're extremely vulnerable extremely vulnerable both your body and your mind you are very vulnerable it happened to me sometimes in my life that I woke up in the middle of the night because suddenly it came up that I forgot to give this guy a check or I forgot to return the keys, right? Uh -huh. Things uh -huh. suddenly pop up in your sleep, you know? And it's a very uh, dangerous situation. You're very subtle. You're well, they very... actually, would, wouldn't they pop up in your conscious mind before you drift off to sleep too? That would, that would be another one. Well, that's the question of your conscious mind. Okay, how mm -hmm. sensitive is your conscious mind? How sensitive is your willingness and your ability to confront your problems? You know, usually we kind of most people are into de the denial. Exactly. And they don't want to confront themselves. Exactly. Yeah, you know that. Yeah. Sure. So you you don't confront you. Let's say your guilt. Let's say you have an affair with another woman, right? And your wife doesn't know. Okay you have a guilt in you uh, and even if you don't talk about it to anybody you know it's mm -hmm. not right and it goes after you sooner or later you have guilt in you and guilt is something 
if you don't want to confront it. And here's the dangerous part. At nighttime, you're very sensitive. And your mind may take over like an alarm bell, a reminder of what mm -hmm. during the daytime mm -hmm. you try to ignore. Right. Right. You're with me on that? Yeah. Good. Got it. So these are the personal problems, and the personal problems can make you problems. I'll tell you something. In all my life, I slept except for three months. Mm. Uh, two ex-partners right. two ex partners mm -hmm. behind my back went together behind my back and cut me off my business overnight. Overnight, oh, I lost okay. all my business, all my income, zero. My wife had to work. Another horror story. Sure. Yeah. My wife had to work double shift. Uh, we had to take the kids out of private school, blah, 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 blah. I've been there. Okay. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, trust me, every night, if I fell asleep because I was tired, I would wake up after one, two hours. And the rest of the night, I was twisting and turning, f trying to find solutions. What do I do now? My My life as it was, was completely shattered. Okay. And it took me three months to cover this up, to turn it around, to find solutions, and to get back to my sleep. So I've been there, personal problems, not sleeping. I've been there. I experienced it. It can be very intense. Okay? All That's right. a terrible story. Yeah. Gosh. All yeah. right. Yeah. 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 So, which brings us to number two. I call it medication. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have sleep problems... To my personal opinion, the worst thing you can do is go to medical, a regular medical doctor. Because you're going to end up with toxic, more or less, sleeping pills. Yep. Which eventually yep. gets independency, an addiction. The sleeping pill masks the problem, but doesn't solve the problem, the reason why you cannot sleep. Which I'm trying no. to give you the ideas here. So I would not go to a medical doctor because um, the typical medical doctor, unless it's a holistic medical doctor, and who talks to you mm -hmm. from person to person, who gives you more than two and a half minutes of his time, who tries to dug into your problems and your world and try to assist you. But most of these doctors don't do that. And uh, it brings me to my first image uh, on what you have on my website, my personal opinion about medical doctors, okay? And I promote this idea I have there everywhere, in front of doctors, in their face, I don't care. To my opinion, 95% of all medical doctors are a disgrace. 3% are good, 2% are fantastic. And the challenge for us all is to find these 2 and 3% doctors. Who are different. Yeah, and when you when you do, good luck getting into the office for an appointment. Word gets around. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, you know, it's no use to take pills for any problems you have. Maybe short term for a week or two or three. I don't deny that some pills may prevent you from a heart attack for a short amount of time. But then you have to mm -hmm. find the reason why you would have had a heart attack and to solve that problem, right? So, and then if you take medication as well, non-sleep medication, just regular medication, medication the doctor prescribed you for whatever uh, problem you have, nothing sleep-related, these toxic, usually toxic uh, products do screw up your body, and uh, you pay a price, and the price may be a bad sleep, Okay. Good. Got it. Yeah. Okay, number three. Number three. That's a tough one for most people. Caffeine. Caffeine and coffee mm. and black tea uh, and in soda pops, energy drinks, they have all caffeine. And Is I, there a time, a window, Norbert, like you don't want to have a cup of coffee after six in the evening because you go to bed at nine or ten and that caffeine will still be rattling around your system? Is there a time window that people should stop cons knowingly consuming caffeine each day in order to prevent it from interfering with their sleep at night? Like eight hours, have coffee in the morning if you need it, 
don't have any more after that. Is that is that one way to approach? Caffeine is addicting, in my view. Well, um, <laughs> um, I don't. I don't drink it. I don't. Well, I do not use caffeine. Never well, have. You see, um, I kept saying in my seminars uh, that caffeine, ca ca caffeine, is bad, and I have this uh, thesis that every coffee drinker is a drug addict. Uh. And if you go on my website, and we, want, we may want to do that show together if you're interested in it, and I, and I explain why, and I prove why, uh -huh. every coffee drinker is a drug addict, full stop. And I cannot go there. Uh -huh. If you're interested, we do an entire show. I just give you the crash course. Mm -hmm. I, in my whole, my, my whole life, I never drank coffee. I love the smell, but I never drank coffee. I never drank alcohol. I never took drugs. I never smoked, at least not in this mm -hmm. lifetime. No soda pops, no energy drinks, which have caffeine. So I said two years ago, um, most of the things I talk about, I have experienced myself. I'm not talking from the ivory tower. I experienced myself on myself or a person next to me or some of my clients uh, as a management yeah. consultant, right? And I said, mm -hmm. crap, coffee you never drank. Okay, so let me drink a cup of coffee every day for, 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 for 30 days. And I made a deal with myself, and I drank coffee every day for 30 days. And after 30 days, I wanted to stop, and I couldn't. It took me three months. You did this? Yes. You, you did this? Yes. Okay, go ahead. It took me three months to get out of the coffee. After I only wow. drank one cup of coffee per day for 30 days. It's a nice story. If we do this coffee show, there's more to it. But the crash course is in a question you ask me. How long before sleeping? My honest answer is no coffee all day. Okay. Period. Period. Right. So if you drink coffee, mm -hmm. you have to start on a gradient. Here's what I predict. 99% of the people who are listening now and are coffee drinkers, I challenge you that you can't stop tomorrow drink coffee for a week or for a month. You cannot. Mm -hmm. And which is a proof to yourself that you are addicted, all right? So mm -hmm. what you have to do is uh, to make it practical. You shouldn't drink coffee not after 12 lunchtime. The coffee, the caffeine takes many, many hours to get out of your system. So if you really have a sleep problem and you drink coffee and you usually drink coffee later as well, well, try for yourself to get out of it. Let's say no more coffee after 12 o'clock lunch or two o'clock in the afternoon after lunch. And that's it. And right. see how you're doing. I know it's going to be tough because you, I tell you, you are addicted. And if your uh -huh. son and your daughter take drugs or what all, all kind of form of drugs, don't look down upon them. You are addicted as your son who takes uh, cocaine or whatever. Cocaine is more mm -hmm. toxic. Yes. You can die faster, yes, more expensive, but the mechanism is the same. So no coffee, no caffeine after 12 o'clock. Remember, in soda pops, energy drinks, everywhere is caffeine, not only coffee. Well, okay. From what I've studied a little bit about these energy drinks, I, you couldn't pay me to take those things. They're dangerous. I think they could cause heart attacks in some people. Of course. And if, if, besides the sugar and the chemicals and so on, right? Um, right? So try. Try to cut the coffee, let's say, two o'clock in the afternoon. And then two, three, four days later, right. 12 o'clock lunchtime. And then go up earlier, earlier and have some. Because a lot of people cannot start the day without coffee. They cannot huh. start yeah. the day. They're so dependent that they cannot start the day. And there's a trick to it. And there's a... a, a A vicious cycle. Okay, so that's caffeine number three. Um, number okay. four, nutrition. We better, we better hurry. Yeah, we got a lot to get through here. Yeah, Go ahead. number four, nutrition. Um, you should not eat meats after three, three o'clock, four o'clock in the afternoon, because a lot of people mm -hmm. have problems to sleep when they eat late dinners with meats. Meats take a lot mm -hmm. of digesting in your body and which keeps your body awake, active, because you got to digest the meat. And that's not pro-sleep. 
So stay away from heavy protein meats after, let's say, 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. That's number four, nutrition. Number five, bad light. The problem is we turn night into day. We don't get enough daylight. Um, let's look here at the image number two, the light spectrum. The light spectrum, the image number two, shows you that the sunlight does not have only one color. There's a spectrum from the light um, between ultraviolet and infrared. There's a big spectrum. And the human body needs the spectrum, not only one light. And we all have not enough daylight. We live in the fridge. We live inside the house. We need at least 20, 30 minutes per day real bright daylight to get to our body with the light dress uh, as much as possible. And the problem is we do not live with nature, we live against nature. And all the lights we have in our households nowadays, the neon tubes, the floodlights, um, the LEDs, they are all counter-survival. They all harm the human mm. body, all of them. Mm. And the only artificial light which is not against your body, against your health, is the conventional incandescent bulb. It's the only one. And funny enough, you have a problem nowadays mm. to buy those. They're yeah. vanishing <laughs> from the shelves. Yeah. What do you think about daylight savings time, how it messes up the biology of your, your own body, your circadian rhythm? is. I, I've always hated it. I don't like it in, in any way. And yet it's still here. They've gotten rid of it in, I think, Iceland. I think Iceland got rid of it. Anyway, it didn't have any effect on anybody. Nobody missed it. So that's no, another one. No, no. It was the idea was behind it to save energy, I guess, you know. Oh, I, I, I know the, the rationalization of it. Yeah, but no, it, not good for you. And you just mentioned anyway. the circadian rhythm. That's our image number three. If the listeners want to look it up, image number three, circadian rhythm. That's the natural rhythm we are supposed to live by. We have a certain internal mm -hmm. clock, and we don't live with nature. We live against nature. We think we can do what we want. The circadian rhythm, people can mm -hmm. look at this quietly then uh, later on. The circadian rhythm is how we, the human body is supposed to live. But with all the TVs and the uh, artificial lights and the entertainment and TV and so on, we live against nature. And uh, at nighttime, we pretend it's daytime and it's not. And we screw up our body. This is why I have image number four, which I always have in my uh, seminars, the gravestone. Okay. Uh, and uh, I designed it, rest in peace. Mankind is extinct because they believe that the laws of nature did not apply to them. Mm. We are the most endangered species of this planet. We just don't know. We're dancing beyond the grave. We're having fun with our suicidal attitudes, which go across the board. I mean, whether it's vaccination or b bad food and bad water and microplastic in the air and the ground and the food. We think we can all do that, and it has no consequences. It takes some while till the consequences show. To my very personal opinion, um, we basically deserve to vanish from this planet because we do everything as stupid as you can in every part of our life, not only in one discipline. So that is uh, my philosophy about the bad light. We live bad light. And now these, everybody has these, nearly everybody has these LEDs, uh, floodlights. I changed my entire house to conventional lights, the bulbs. Again, I had problems to find them because they vanished from the mm. shelves in the, in the home store, right. you know. Okay. There are people still making them though, correct? They haven't yes. been outlawed. No. You can still get them. Well, I must admit that uh, like, like on the, on, I went to various home markets and they had just one uh -huh. type, one size. Uh, not a choice like they used to be. Of, like a, what, a 60 water? Yeah, but not a choice of 100 watt or 120 or 30, and just uh -huh. one size fits all and take it or leave it. Got it. So what I did, I can tell you what I did. I went to Amazon and I bought three huge boxes 
full of bulbs that I have supply for the mm -hmm. next years, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But you have to understand how, what it does to the human body to be willing to sacrifice and to change that. All right. So, okay, uh, number six. Well, we have the image number six. The image number six is the smart yes. defenders. So we will talk about these. These products are developed, the smart defenders, uh, against electromagnetic radiation. They don't only do electromagnetic radiation. They do much more. Uh, high and low voltages. And all these lights I was just talking about, the negative effects of the lights, are nullified. Mm -hmm. We nullify them so that you can still use them. So uh, I had to do this because I was... It was clear to me that the majority of people will not change the bulbs. So I had to find. No, they won't. Group. No, they will not. You know, they they will not change the bulbs. And they will still wear their mask. So I have to make it easy on them. So what I do with this technology, I nullify, and here's these image number six, where I explain basically what I mean by nullify. You have a horizontal line, which is zero. Let's say you have a bad particle in water, uh, let's say arsenic, uh, which most American waters have arsenic. And arsenic is this minus two. If I know arsenic has the frequency of minus two, if I now add to the water the frequency of plus two, it's simple math, plus two and minus two is zero. Uh, it's nullifying. Um, and on my website is a paragraph called Protect Pro Technology, where I explain it more. If you take your time and go there, uh, okay. you explain it more. And in physics, there's an expression called inversion. So all I'm doing, in quote, all I'm doing is I inverse the negative frequencies so they have no more impact. That's a crash course, but there's more on my website under Protect Pro technology. Now we come to number six, blue light. This has been around lately. Uh, people became aware of it. And there's some people advertising certain uh, spectacles you wear um, to nullify or to treat the blue light. I personally tried those um, glasses and I have a problem to live with them, especially when I work on a computer they change, change so much my vision and my, uh, my, my feeling for the colors that I really couldn't, I couldn't live with them. So what I did is I programmed my products so that we nullify the effect of the blue light. What happens with the blue light is not that it's blue. <clears throat> when we wake up in the morning, there's a red and yellow light in the sun on this earth. When we go at nighttime, again, we have this reddish, yellowish night, right? That's normal right. normal situation. Now, midday, 12-ish o'clock, we have the light um, frequencies are uh, blue and whitish. So in other words, the, what happens is the blue light, which is emitted from our screens, monitor, TV, laptops, pads, and so on, this blue light suggests to the body it's daytime, it's midday, you're not tired yet, okay? Be aware, be alert. It's the middle of the day. You are not tired. Uh -huh. That's the problem with the blue light. And if you walk down the street at nighttime and the neighbors have their TV running, you can see the blue light the entire Oh, that's the blue light, all right. You bet, right through the window. Right through yeah. the window, right? And people don't realize it's all blue light. So um, I looked at this and said, okay, with the glasses, wearing the glasses doesn't work for most of people again. Um, so I had to nullify the blue light. So what it does is you are sitting at 6 o'clock, 8 o'clock at nighttime in front of the computer, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, and the computer, the blue light keeps telling you it's not nighttime, it's daytime, hello, the inner clock, no, 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 it's not nighttime. We're trying to, to, to trick the body without being aware of it to make uh, an impact that it's daylight, it's daytime. Your body should be awake. So it's uh, counterproductive, the blue light, to try to get sleep. All right? Make sense? 
Yeah, got it. Now, yeah. the interesting part is we have now six numbers done, and we have not even entered the sleeping room. Mm -hmm. That's so the, true. So the yeah. first six points I covered have nothing uh -huh. to do with the sleeping room, with you lying in bed, with you going to sleep. These are all effects outside the sleeping room in mm -hmm. your during the daytime, which will, in most cases, many cases, affect your sleep at nighttime. And they happened hours, half a day, a day before you went to sleep. And they're showing their results later. And here we have number image number seven, a very interesting fellow, Paracelsus, a Swiss guy, a guy from Switzerland. And he said, a sick bed is the surest way to ruin your health. Now, we must know and understand, and I put there his, his uh, life spread. The guy lived uh, early 1500. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're talking here. 500 years ago, 500 years ago, this guy said a sick bed is the surest way to ruin your health. Interesting. I found this interesting. Yeah, it is. Very good. So yeah. the reason number seven, now we step, I feel that I'm like under pressure here about the time here. So I'm really running fast. I'm um, hoping not too fast, but okay. Got to no, no, you're doing fine. Very understandable. No so, problem. Good. Thank you. So the reason number seven, I call it room climate. Mm -hmm. Temperature of the room. It's always a problem if you have uh, a couple and one likes it warm and one likes it colder. There's a permanent struggle, mm -hmm. which even ended up in a song, I guess, by Paul Simon, where he says, you <laughs> like to keep the window open and I keep the like the window closed. So goodbye, 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 he says, right? If it would be that easy. So the temperature in the room can be very significant to your sleep. And most sleep people who have sleep problems wake up at nighttime sweating and everything is too hot and too warm and they toss and turn and, you know. And then there's the other point is the moisture. A lot of people don't understand that you should, to the most part, live with a moisture level of 50%. And um, in most cases, the moisture is, for example, too low. The air is too dry. Like I have big problems when I travel the world in wintertime and I'm in a hotel in New York and the rooms are so warm, so dry, the air is so dry, um, my nose, my throat, everything is worn out, is completely dried up. Um, so... Make sure that the moisture in your room is correct. And they're pretty inexpensive machines, uh, very quiet, uh, which uh, give out moisture if, it, uh, if the level of moisture is below 50%. They mm -hmm. just put up new moisture in the air. So moisture can be an effective uh, problem to your health and to your sleep. And then there's the question of oxygen, of course, that you have rich oxygen in your room. And the more central heating you have, uh, the more the oxygen gets killed. So temperature, moisture, oxygen, which are called room climate. These may reasons, number seven, for you to have sleep problems. Number eight, lack of darkness in sleeping room. The pineal gland, which is responsible not only for creating melatonin, but as well to regulate hormones, uh, and you'll regulate your inner clock and even your mental stability. There's a lot going on with the pineal gland. A lot of people, a lot of doctors don't know that, um, besides melatonin. The pineal gland is very, very, very important. Mm -hmm. And uh, to my belief, uh, 4G and 5G radiation attacks the pineal gland. So dark room, have the room as dark as possible. If you would live with me now here at home, my sleeping room is entire black. There is no lights, uh, no nothing. Uh, mm -hmm. I live very remotely here. Um, mm -hmm. It is important that the room is dark. The human being over millions of years has developed with the change of daylight and, uh, 
and, and, and nightlight, which means dark and daylight. But as I said, we're making the, uh, the, the nights to, to daylights. Uh, we have too many lights uh, and uh, you have to go to rest. So that's very simple. Make the room as dark as possible, number eight. Number nine, noise level. The room should be dead quiet. The spiritual being cannot switch off the perception at nighttime. People think they don't hear anymore when there's noise around. For example, if you're unfortunate, you live, your sleeping room is next to a, a main street where a lot of traffic goes at nighttime, backs and forth. People tell me, well, I don't hear this anymore. No, I don't believe you. You are numb. But your spiritual awareness is being bothered all night because the spiritual awareness cannot switch off the sound, the noise. It's just bothering. Whether you with your body trying to ignore it and you became numb, it does not mean that it's not bothering. I was living for a short amount of time in Germany in a city, a BASF, the chemical company there, had a big factory. And I was staying there for two, three months. Right. And I tell you something, the smell in this town was horrible, horrible. But the people lived there all their lives. They didn't smell it anymore. Mm. But it doesn't mean that it doesn't attack you, the air. So if you don't... Right, of course. Yeah. Yes. So people say, oh, I don't hear this noise anymore. Yeah, you hear it, not your ears, but your mind, which is much more sensitive. So regardless... Try to get the noise level down to towards zero. And if needed, change the room within the apartment. Go to another place. Just try it out. Just try it out and put the mattress, uh, whatever, in the kitchen on the floor where it's quiet instead of your sleeping room where it's loud or in the living room, whatever. Just these are suggestions. Uh, look, these are possible reasons. If you have a noise level in your sleeping room, which is pretty intense, um, you should make a try and get away from it to see whether it changes your sleep. That's all. Comes to number 10. Very simple product, which is called mattress. Okay. Of course, the quality of mattress can determine the quality of your sleep. And mattresses are big right. business. Um, and some a lot people... of fraud in those mattresses, too. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of people... Um, Try to buy cheap mattresses, hundred ninety. No, no, bucks. no, no. With metal coils in them. Oh, no, no. Those are antennas. They pick up all manner of electromagnetic frequency pollution exactly. and re-radiate it right into your body. Yes. You don't want to do that. I, I personally, years and years ago, bought. Uh, I still have it. A hundred percent latex, organic latex mattress. Yep. No coils, no springs, just pure latex. Yes. Inside the mattress. Yes. Wonderful. And if you think, let's say you have to spend for a mattress, let's throw a number, $1,000, right? And the mattress is good for 10, 20 years. What is right. that amount compared to the hours you're using that mattress? And the oh, you spend about, about one third of your life on it. You better, you better be prepared to pay and get something the best you can afford, yes. period. You don't have an office chair for 10 bucks from no. Ikea, a uh, kitchen chair, to sit at the office table, right? You know you're going to ruin your 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 bones and your uh, body, right? So mattress is very important. And mm -hmm. then, of course, there is this thing. Sorry, but I have to say it. These mattresses, which nowadays you can electrically change the position. So you have a motor, electrical motor, in the bed built in, and uh, wires, wires, cables, cables. Yeah. Um, electric magnetic radiation you create yourself, okay? This is the mattress, yep. okay? Yep. Number yep. 11, sleep position. Now, I made studies, I started about 40 years ago when I came across that as I was sleeping on my belly, that most people were sleeping on their belly, which is to me the worst position you can sleep. Because when you, oh, yeah. Yeah, when yeah. you sleep on your belly, you got to twist your head completely 90 degrees left or right all right. night long. It's true. You know? Yep. If you try to walk through the day 
and you take your head and you force it to your shoulder left or right and walk around for three, five hours with the head twisted like that, you will feel how this position affects your spinal cord and your atlas, the upper uh, you have in your spinal cord. Uh, and so you got to, um, that's my personal opinion, no belly sleep. Now, I was sleeping for the first 30 years of my life on the belly. When I came across, I wanted to change to a side position. Side position is very good. Back position is for a lot of people good as well. There's some more snoring perhaps involved with the back position, but let's say the side position. Now, it took me about six months to change my attitudes from a belly position at nighttime to the side position. I woke up in the middle of the night and I found myself on the belly, had to force to the side, woke up again mm. on the belly, forced to the side. That was going on for six months till I would keep, stay solid on the side. Because if you're used to that position, and one reason we sleep on the belly, to my observation, the parents, usually the mothers, make a baby sleep on the belly. Because they're afraid. I've never heard this. I, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, it's the worst thing you can do. You think mothers would know better. No, they don't. The reason for this is they're afraid if the baby throws up at nighttime. Yeah, they'll aspirate. I, I get it. Okay. So they put them on the belly to be safe, right? Yeah, uh, well, I, I, I see. Okay. And if a, if a baby mm -hmm. has been raised like this for years, the childhood and so on, they never change. I'm struggling Interesting. now. Interesting. That's where it, so that's where that comes from. Okay. I get it. If you look at the image number uh, 11, yeah. there, there is a sleep position. If you lay on the sides, it's important yeah. that the uh, pillow uh, does not force your head to go up in an angle or fall down right. in an angle so that the right. pillow that you sleep straight. I have this graphic mm -hmm. there, which makes it understandable. Now, number 12, the inner clock, the Chinese clock. Now, you got to look at this image number 12 now. Um, you know, I was very deep involved with Chinese uh, people, medicine, and culture. And I had mm -hmm. my company in China for many years. Um, my former wife was Chinese. And uh, I left China many years ago and I said never again for good reasons. All right. Which we nowadays feel. Um, yes. So what happens is in Chinese medicine, there is an inner clock. And you see the inner clock um, in segments. So I'll give you an example. If you typically wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. there are people who say, I don't know what's going on. I wake every night at 2 o'clock in the morning. Every night. Well, then you have a problem with your liver. On this clock, you see at which time of the day certain organs are active. So this is a Chinese clock, yes. so to speak. I call it Chinese clock, okay. right? All right. Um, so, good. which means now it shows you two o'clock is the liver active. Now, if you have a liver problem, then uh -huh. this creates turbulences and it will wake you up. And uh -huh. interesting enough, exactly opposite time of the day, that uh -huh. organ is in complete rest mode, opposite of being active, okay? So if you look at this clock and you have certain times of the night you wake up always or many times, most of the times, that's a clear indicator that the organ which shows here at the clock has a problem. And you got to handle that organ. And if that organ is handled, the health related, you will not wake up at this time anymore. All right. Okay. So you want to detox your liver for sure. And well, stop poisoning it with alcohol, chemicals, drugs, yeah. et cetera. And I can tell you that most of the people have problems with liver because of the way we live, right? Oh, and sure. Let yeah. me then uh, finish the show with some basics for this show before we go to the other points then. And again, the most important points are coming up. They're not covered yet. So All right. these problems we have so far, 
and the problems we will be covering next time okay. are all consequences of what I call our crazy lifestyle. It's a lifestyle problem. All these problems are lifestyle. They have nothing to do with natural living. Right. We're living. And look how we're trained to do that. Yes. That very thing. We're trained to live an unnatural, hostile lifestyle to our own bodies. We're trained. Yes. That's what that's what the television is. That's reality. And we we for, that, for we, most people. Well, we love we love our uh, fluffy, sexy, entertaining lifestyle, and we don't we're not fully aware that it comes with a price, and the price is our health. There's no question. Right. And spending the last ten right. years of our life with Alzheimer's in a elderly home cannot be quality of life. No, no. All right. So let's. We have a couple, three minutes. SD. Okay. Let's explain that right now. I developed a product. Mm -hmm. It looks like a credit card, and I programmed, except for electromagnetic radiation, I could program most of the sleep problems in here. And you just put it in your sleeping room. It covers 30 feet in radius. So if you have the kid's sleeping room next to you, it covers the sleeping room as well. And I'm so confident and proud of it that first time in my life, I offer a complete money-back guarantee. Yes, it has been tested by the Bisa Institute. But it doesn't matter what the Bisa Institute tests. You with the sleep problems, you are the only person who can say, it works for me or not. So when people buy it, 195 bucks, and within four weeks, this product has not helped you to sleep significantly better, I take it completely back, fully reimburse you the money. I believe it should help. The, the success rate we have in our test period uh, was so enormous that we said, look, we give that money back guarantee. I'm not looking for victims. And uh, the person decides it works for me or not. Very simple. Well, that's uh, extraordinary. It's absolutely risk free. Uh, so people can try this with no risk whatsoever. Very good. I even re Doesn't get any better than that. Uh, no, I even reimbursed the shipping costs. They have no car, no, no problem at all. Um, the success yeah. rate was so good that I feel very comfortable that, you know, that hardly no, anybody. I know you, it. and and that's that's saying a lot. I, I get it. Very good. You see it. It looks right there, like a credit card. It's blue. S D three yeah. sleep protect, thirty three feet, or ten meters, of radius protection. Is that three hundred and sixty degrees, like a yes. a globe yes. around you? Yes, yes. And I did it because very often you have a sleeping room from the parents and next a kid's sleeping room so that both sleeping rooms are covered because in are quantum covered, yeah because it's quantum physics quantum physics knows no walls and say so, oh here's a wall we can work in you know? yeah so Very thanks good. a lot right. so we'll and, see you next to, wednesday to, then yeah to to order norbert where, where do they want to go they go to, to my website improveyourlife.us Okay. Improve your life. Improve your life. Us. Yes. Improve your life. Us. One hundred percent money back guarantee and including shipping. It doesn't get any better than that. So you all have nothing to lose. If you have any sleep problems, and that's probably ninety-five percent of our listeners, I would give this a try. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. 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 I'm not never. I'm never well, look for victims for my products. I want people to be successful, happy, content with what we're doing. And uh, if right. not, um, I, I, I would like to have dinner with you tomorrow as a friend, but not as an enemy who says uh, you betrayed me with your product. Because, frankly, um, well, yeah. you know, many products. You know, many products out there promise to oh, work, and they don't. I know, and they don't. I know, I know. And people we are so have, disappointed. Uh, people are so disappointed by doctors. They couldn't help me. I went to 10 different doctors. Everybody told me, you don't have a problem. I know I have a problem. People are disappointed by quality of service and products in this world. Understood. Remember, one third of the health industry quit and walked away rather than take the bioweapon injection. Chances are your doctor is injected. And he or she may not be any longer mentally as competent as they were 
I'm not saying they're all that way. I'm saying it's a fact. We have so many stories of people who have brain issues now, personality changes after getting these shots. And that includes health professionals. One third quit, two thirds took the shot to stay on the job. Sickening what they did to those people. All right, uh, Norbert, Wednesday, the 17th, same time, and we will uh, finish this conversation. Thank you for your time, for your attention. Thank you guys out there. I wish you a, you happy, a happy, good sleep Im tonight. Sleep well. Yeah, sleep. improve improveyourlife.us. That's the website. So go check it out. All right. Thank you, Norbert. Talk to you next week. Thank you, Jeff. Bye-bye, bye-bye. Okay. Good night. And good night to all of you. Thanks for being here. A lot of information tonight. <laughs>